Forget carbon fiber. Maybe it's time to choose aluminium for your next road bike. The price of new bikes, as we all know, is at an all time high. And that is one very compelling reason to choose aluminium, because it's a lot cheaper and better value for money. Both Specialized and Trek have recently launched very interesting new aluminium road bikes, and we'll dive into details of those later in the video. But first, I think it's probably worth talking a bit about why you might choose aluminium over carbon fiber. Now, price is clearly one big reason. Aluminium frames are a lot cheaper to make than carbon fiber, so the overall cost of the bike is much less. That also means you often get better components, wheels, group sets and tires, because a carbon frame takes away more of the budget in the complete bike build. But on the flip side, that low price is also why aluminium is most often reserved for entry-level cheap bikes. And even though carbon prices have come down a lot in the last 20 years, it still carries a premium. So price is definitely one factor, but that's not all. The other qualities mean you get a high performance road bike without breaking the bank. And if you want proof of this, check out my recent video on this cheap CAD 12 behind me, which I bought secondhand for 400 quid compared to a very expensive, very high end, but very nice carbon road bike. The difference, as it turns out, is pretty small. I'll put a link to that video down below. When it comes to weight, well, aluminium frames are not that much heavier than a cheap or mid-range carbon frame. This CAD 12 behind me, for example, 1100 grams, and that is lighter than a very nice carbon fiber Trek Amanda SL frame set. Aluminium is also tough and less likely to be damaged badly in a crash, so ideal if you're racing or if you're clumsy. There are downsides though. The biggest concern, and I think it's one that puts many people off the material, is the perception it offers a harsh ride quality. But this is definitely not the case with a modern frame. Yes, they are firmer than a good carbon fiber frame, but notice the use of the word good. A good aluminum frame can often be smoother than a bad carbon frame in my experience. And with good tires and a carbon seat post and handlebar, you can really close that gap between aluminum and a good carbon frame. So we've outlined some reasons why aluminum might be worth buying over carbon fiber. Now let's look at two potential candidates from Trek and Specialized. This then is Trek's brand new and latest generation of Monda ALR, based on a carbon bike of the same name, which I recently reviewed here on Just Ride Bikes. And it's a really nice looking bike with extremely smooth wells and much nicer looking than the Specialized Alley Sprint I showed you all last year. I think we can all agree on that. Despite the difference in frame material, it has the same geometry, Trex 1.5, as the carbon version that I recently found provides great handling. They've even managed to shape the tubes to be aero-optimized with cam tail down tubes and head tubes, and it's also full internal cable routing. Well, not quite full internal, it goes underneath the stem into a steering tube. For better or worse, let me know your thoughts down below. And there's also a T47 bottom bracket, so a thumbs up for that. But sadly, the bike only offers space officially for up to 28 mm wide tires and there are no mudguard mounts. And that would definitely limit its versatility and usefulness as an all-round bike for commuting as well as racing and sportives. Frame weight is acclaimed 1,257 grams, so pretty good, but heavier than the CAD 12 behind me. A good chunk lighter than the previous version by about 200 grams and closes the gap quite a bit to the Amanda SL carbon frame. Trek is offering this new bike in just two builds, both with Shimano 105, either mechanical, weighing nine kilograms, and electronic DI2, weighing 8.8 kilograms. And that highlights the general issue with aluminum bikes in the cycling marketplace. They are reserved, as I said earlier, for the entry level, and manufacturers don't often spec anything more than 105 or Ultegra if you're lucky. I guess they feel that customers, you guys watching, aren't buying aluminum frames with high-end group sets because if you're buying that sort of bike, you want a carbon frame for the benefits it offers and the fact it's used by the pros in the Tour de France. 
but you could buy a frame set, put a nice Ultegra or SRAM red group set on there, say, and some nice flash NV carbon wheels and have a very nice, relatively affordable, high performance race bike for sporties and general smashing around the country lanes. So where that Trek is billed as a race bike, but made from metal rather than carbon, the brand new Specialized Allais launching today, it's a much more accessible bike. The Allais has long been a very popular model in the company range, and it's the company's most affordable road bike as well. And it's a bike that can be used for racing and sporties for sure, but with mudguard and rack mounts has commuting written all over it. When I lived in London, I saw loads of people using the Allais on a daily commute. So a very popular bike for that reason. So we have an all new aluminium E5 frame set weighing a claimed 1,375 grams. So yeah, not super light, but certainly not heavy. And we have a full carbon fork with a carbon steerer tube, which is a nice touch. You often get a carbon fork with an alloy steerer to save money, but at the expense of weight and ride quality. So that helped keep the weight down and improve the smoothness and compliance of this bike. There are other nice details like a threaded bottom bracket and a round 27.2 millimeter seat post as well and the mudguard and rack mounts I previously mentioned. And the other big news is a fact it's only available with disc brakes. Now we often see rim brakes at this price point due to the price of disc brakes being higher than rim brakes, but that's clearly changing. Now the positive of the news is the fact that tire clearance is a whopping 35 millimeters or 32 with mudguards. That makes this a properly versatile bike and light gravel and dirt would not be out of the question at all. The common downside to disc brakes at the lower price points is the weight. So claimed bike weight is 9.5 kilograms with Tiagra and 10 kilograms with Claris. The only two builds the company is offering with a new frame. The geometry is based on the Roubaix, the company's endurance bike. So not a slammed race bike like that Amanda LR. So definitely a more accessible uh, bike that would appeal to a wider audience than that race bike. The new bike is priced at £1,100 for the base Claris model and £1,600 for the Sport Tiagra model. So there we are, two very interesting new aluminium bikes aimed at very different people, racing and everything else, but both very enticing in a world of increasingly expensive carbon fiber bikes. But which will you choose and what do you think about aluminium over carbon fiber? Love to hear your thoughts as always. And if we see a roundup of the best road bikes available, in 2023, then check the video right up here and don't forget to subscribe by hitting the button right here. But that's all for today. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you all again very soon.